setting up a rationale to go much further. This is the beginning of a Russian invasion of Ukraine, as he indicated and asked permission to be able to do from his Duma. So let's begin to, uh, so I, I'm to gonna Shemaz begin to impose Network. sanctions in response Far and this is a special report from uh, President Biden speaking on the uh, and if Russia goes further with this invasion, we stand prepared uh, to go further crisis. as with sanctions. Who in the Lord's name does Putin think gives him the right to declare new so-called countries on territory that belong to his neighbors? This is a flagrant violation of international law and demands a firm response from the international community. Over the last few months, we've coordinated closely with our NATO allies and partners in Europe and around the world to prepare that response. We've said all along, and I've told Putin to his face some month, a month, more than a month ago, that we would act together. And the moment Russia moved against Ukraine, Russia has now undeniably moved against Ukraine by declaring these independent states. So today, I'm announcing the first tranche of sanctions to impose costs on Russia in response to their actions yesterday. These have been closely coordinated with our allies and partners and will continue to escalate sanctions if Russia escalates. We're implementing full blocking sanctions on two large Russian financial institutions, VEB and their military bank. We're implementing comprehensive sanctions on Russian sovereign debt. That means we've cut off Russia's government from Western financing. It can no longer raise money from the West and cannot trade in its new debt on our markets or European markets either. Starting tomorrow and continuing in the days ahead, we'll also impose sanctions on Russia's elites and their family members. They share in the corrupt gains of the Kremlin policy and should share in the pain as well. And because of Russia's actions, we have worked with Germany to ensure Nord Stream 2 will not, as I promised, will not move forward. As Russia contemplates its next move, we have our next move prepared as well. Russia will pay an even steeper price if it continues its aggression, including additional sanctions. The United States will continue to provide defensive assistance to Ukraine in the meantime, and will continue to reinforce and reassure our NATO allies. Today, in response to Russia's admission that it will not withdraw its forces from Belarus, I have authorized additional movements of U.S. forces and equipment already stationed in Europe to strengthen our Baltic allies, Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania. Let me be clear, these are totally defensive moves on our part. We have no intention of fighting Russia. We want to send an unmistakable message, though, that the United States, together with our allies, will defend every inch of NATO territory and abide by the commitments we made to NATO. We still believe that Russia is poised to go much further in launching a massive military attack against Ukraine. Hope I'm wrong about that, hope we're wrong about that, but Russia has only escalated this threat against the rest of Ukrainian territory, including major cities and including the capital city of Kyiv. There are, there are still well over 150,000 Russian troops surrounding Ukraine. And as I said, Russian forces remain positioned in Belarus to attack Ukraine from the north, including war planes and offensive missile systems. Russia has moved troops closer to Ukraine's border with Russia. Russia's naval vessels are maneuvering in the Black Sea to Ukraine south, including amphibious assault ships, missile cruisers, and submarines. Russia has moved supplies of blood and medical equipment into position on the border. You know, and now political provocation of recognizing sovereign Ukrainian territory and so-called independent re republics in clear violation, again, of international law. President Putin has sought authorization from the Russian parliament to use military force outside of Russian ter territory. And this set the stage for further pretext of further provocations by Russia to try to justify further military action. None of us, none of us should be fooled. None of us will be fooled. There is no justification. Further Russian assault in Ukraine remains a severe threat in the days ahead. And if Russia proceeds, it is Russia and Russia alone that bears the responsibility. As we respond, my administration is using every tool at our disposal to protect American businesses and consumers from rising prices at the pump. 
As I said last week, defending freedom will have cost for us as well, and here at home. We need to be honest about that. But as we will do, but as we do this, I'm going to take robust action to make sure the pain of our sanctions is targeted at the Russian economy, not ours. We're closely monitoring energy supplies for any disruption. We're executing a plan in coordination with major oil producing consumers and producers toward a collective investment to secure stability in global energy supplies. This will be uh, this will blunt gas prices. I want to limit the pain the American people are feeling at the gas pump. This is critical to me. In the last few days, I've been in constant contact with European leaders, including with Ukrainian President Zelensky. Vice President Harris met in person with the leaders in Germany over the weekend in, at the Munich conference, including President Zelensky. At every step, we have shown the United States and our allies and partners are working in unison, which he hasn't been counting on, Mr. Putin. We're united in our support of Ukraine. We are united in our opposition to Russian aggression. And we're united in our resolve to defend our NATO alliance. And we're united in our understanding of the urgency and seriousness of the threat Russia is making to global peace and stability. Yesterday, the world heard clearly the full extent of Vladimir Putin's twisted rewrite of history, going back more than a century as he waxed eloquently, noting that, well, I'm not going to go into it, but nothing in Putin's length of remarks indicate any interest in pursuing real dialogue on European security in the year 2022. He directly attacked Ukraine's right to exist. He indirectly threatened territorial formerly held by Russia, including nations that today are thriving democracies and members of NATO. He explicitly threatened war unless his extreme demands were met. And there's no question that Russia is the aggressor. So we're clear eyed about the challenges we're facing. Nonetheless, there is still time to avert the worst case scenario that will bring untold suffering to millions of people if they move as suggested. The United States and our allies and partners remain open to diplomacy if it is serious. When all is said and done, we're going to judge Russia by its actions, not its words. And whatever Russia does next, we're ready to respond with unity, clarity, and conviction. We'll probably have more to say about this as it moves on. I'm hoping diplomacy is still available. Thank you all very much. President Biden there in the East Room, not taking any questions, likely given the gravity of the moment the world is now facing. He did talk about Vladimir Putin and his announcement just 24 hours ago that he now recognizes two separatist regions in eastern Ukraine as independent countries. And the president saying just moments ago, Putin bizarrely said these regions uh, do not belong to Ukraine. He said he's setting up the rationale to take more territory at the beginning of a Russian invasion of Ukraine. The president going on to say, who in the Lord's name does Putin think gives him the right to declare a new so-called uh, countries on territory that belong to its neighbor in making the case that the time for harsh sanctions uh, has now arrived. He talked about thousands of U.S. troops already positioned uh, in Europe being moved towards Eastern Europe as a show of force, a defensive move, but making sure, knowing that not only he's talking to the American people, but to the world and to Vladimir Putin, that U.S. troops and the U.S. has no intention of fighting uh, against or uh, any kind of military conflict with Russia, making that very clear. He also warned the American people yet again that there will be impacts here at home, likely when it comes to energy prices and beyond with the greater economy. I want to get right to Mary Bruce, our senior White House correspondent, because, Mary, he listed those uh, sanctions, the harsher sanctions, new sanctions from just the ones uh, that he imposed 24 hours ago. And you and I were talking before we came on the air about listening very closely how close he would get to Vladimir Putin. Uh, he didn't go to him directly, but he left open the possibility that the next round will even be more harsh given the next move by Russia. Yeah, David, it is clear that the president is doing this in waves. He said this is just the first tranche. The president taking his first actions to hit Russia directly, going after two large Russian banks, cutting them off from raising money from the West going after Russian elites, some of those in Putin's inner circle, and of course, noting that the Nord Stream 2 pipeline between Germany and Russia will not go forward. But the president making it very clear that he is reserving the option to go even further, because as he said, 
He thinks that Russia is setting up a rationale to take more territory. If Putin goes further, the U.S. will go further in taking action against him, including possibly sanctioning Putin himself. The question, though, David, is whether any of that, this threat, is going to deter Vladimir Putin, because as you well know, he's already dismissing and brushing this off. He knows the possibility that he's going to face these hard sanctions, and right now it doesn't seem to be doing anything to stop him. And Mary, real quick before I move on from you there at the White House, there had been some talk overnight and into this morning about whether or not uh, Russian troops heading into these uh, Russian separatist regions of Ukraine, whether or not that constitutes uh, an invasion. The president and members of his team earlier today made it clear, but the president just now making it clear that the invasion uh, has begun, uh, not mincing any words there. Exactly. The invasion has begun. This is underway. Those at the White House top officials here have also been noting that Russia has already uh, had forces in this area since 2014. The question is whether the, uh, Vladimir Putin is going to go a step further and send troops further into Ukraine, possibly even into Kyiv. President Biden making it clear that is certainly still a very real possibility. All right, Mary, stay with us there from the White House. I want to bring in our chief global affairs correspondent, Martha Radich. She's live in Ukraine. She's been there for several days now. Uh, Martha, Secretary Austin saying just a short time ago uh, that he praised Ukraine for its restraint in the face of aggression in his words. He said it's not too late for Putin to avoid a, quote, full-blown tragic war of choice. But what we just heard from President Biden, you and I talked about on the air last night on World News Tonight, the idea that the Russians likely want to go in not only to these separatist regions, but then to expand the boundaries of the lines that they would like to have recognized instead of the, the literal region that they have control over right now. It, it, exactly, David, and they're, they're very firm that they do believe they will go in beyond those regions and, and as Mary pointed out, possibly all the way to Kyiv. So the Pentagon, the White House are all standing by. They do believe this invasion is still imminent. And of course, you heard, David, that they're going to send more U.S. forces, this time to the Baltic states, uh, to reinforce our NATO allies. I was with Secretary Austin just the other day in Poland, uh, where about 5,000 additional forces have been sent. All those U.S. forces were already in Europe. We have about 74,000 in Europe. There is still a reserve force of 8,500 that has not been sent, but it is clear if they think those NATO allies need shoring up, the U.S. is going to help them, but not as you've said so many times, David, go into Ukraine itself. And Martha, I was struck by something else the president said that you have reported for a couple of days now, given what U.S. intelligence has seen, not only the tens of thousands of troops amassed along the border, the president actually talking about uh, supplies of blood there on the border. He said uh, that is not put into place unless they think there's going to be loss of life here. It, it, exactly, David. And, and President Biden talked about those ships, too, in the Black Sea and submarines, Russian ships and submarines that are threatening those borders as well. Everything they have seen in the last two weeks leads them to believe that Vladimir Putin will, in fact, go into Ukraine, David. Martha, thank you. The president, in, in his words, saying you don't need blood unless you plan on starting a war. I want to bring in our foreign correspondent, James Longman, who's been watching how this is playing out. Uh, for the Russians, the president of Russia, obviously Vladimir Putin, addressing the Russian people last night in a lengthy address. And James, the case has been made that Ukraine is the aggressor, that the West has lied to Russia, uh, and that Ukraine could be a real threat unless they take action. Yeah, that's absolutely right, David. You know, this idea that a small country, yes, in Ukraine, but it's being aided and abetted by the United States and its allies. We actually heard Vladimir Putin again today uh, speaking to the Russian public, saying that there was likely that a nuclear weapon could be given to Ukraine uh, to attack Russia. I mean, these are the messages that the Russians are hearing. David? And of course, the U.S. says no plan for that and no plan for Ukraine to take any kind of military action. Our thanks to James Longman. One more question before we go here. I want to bring in our chief business and economics correspondent, Rebecca Jervis. Obviously, we've been watching the markets all day, Rebecca. This, the stock market all, already reacting to the news of the last 24 hours. And you heard what the president said moments ago. He said, we're monitoring energy supplies for any disruption and executing a plan in coordination with major oil producing consumers. Of course, we don't know exactly what that means, but it seems the president is bracing, just as the American people are, for the real effects to be felt here at home. 
Absolutely, David. And, and for many, the real effects are already being felt here at home. This escalation uh, with Russia has driven prices higher over the last month, up about 25 cents a gallon at the pump. The national average today, $3.53. And in California, they are now paying record prices for gasoline, $4.74. And of course, this all comes on the heels of already rising inflation. And where you look at Wall Street right now, that sell-off, which continues, is a real sense of caution. This this feeling that this is the first tranche, as the president said. What comes next? Well, the ball is up in the air, and that could drive prices at the pump much higher and certainly drive greater volatility on Wall Street, David. Unsettling, because we could be facing uh, uh, perhaps the biggest conflict in Europe since World War II. And, of course, Americans at home know that they're about to feel this as well from an economic standpoint. Rebecca Jarvis, uh, James Longman, Mary Bruce, Martha Raddatz, our team on this all day long. Our coverage will continue on ABC News Live, abcnews.com, and, of course, I'll be back with the entire team for World News Tonight. I'm David Muir in New York. And this has been a special news report regarding the sanctions and crisis of the Russians' aggression against the Ukraine. Uh, the country of Ukraine, uh, Russia has invaded Ukraine, and the United States has uh, the United States president, uh, President Biden. Uh, has imposed uh, uh, some, some severe sanctions against Russia for their aggression against Ukraine. The United States has imposed uh, sanctions against you uh, against Russia for their aggression against Ukraine, and uh, further uh, sanctions are are, are waiting, uh, depending upon what Russia do uh, so far and going forth. Uh, if they're going to go all the way into Ukraine, that, that will be more severe uh, sanctions uh, against Russia. And one of the uh, one of these sanctions against Russia that uh, President Biden has out, outlined today is to keep the uh, Russian banks from doing business business with the uh, uh, West West uh, uh, West business and West. Uh, West government, and this is I am the host. This is the Shabazz uh, News Hour Network. We're covering the uh, invasion of um, Ukraine by the Russian government, and I am the host Hamad Shabazz, and we thank you for watching.